So recently there's been a flurry of activity on KIP in terms of updates and you can see here all the various things that have happened. So the last time I kind of did any video covering KIP was way back in version sort of 1.3. I have been using it since and I have been going through these updates. And as I say, they've put a lot of work into this recently and really several updates to the package. So if you have a look here, what they've done in version two, so they've made a change to how it saves and stores the files. I'll run through that shortly um, and show you some of the changes that they've made, but obviously they've added a lot of other things and they're actually on version 2.41, just just been released. Uh, I think that came out in the last few days. So again, I'll show you some of the things that um, that have happened here and, and some of these new updates because it, it's made quite a difference really. So here is a test setup that I've got running. I'm actually running this on a Raspberry Pi 5. So um, you might notice a few little things that, that pop up, one of which being it'll say that it's disconnected from the server. And that's because it's just running um, some test data. So don't worry about that too much. So here's the, the new KIP dashboard. And straight away, you'll notice that the colors have changed. There you go, that bit there. You'll notice that pop up every so often. You'll notice here that there's some difference is in the colors straight away and this gauge has obviously changed in the center. So in terms of a just a, a regular sort of field display numbers or text, the actual information that you put in about that particular panel has changed and it's not as it's not in the forefront anymore as it was previously. So I quite like that. You'll also notice down here that now you can add colors to these. So if we go into the edit and we edit the layout, let's pick this one down here. So if we click the cog, you'll notice that there is now a colour option. So we can change that from just the standard. If we put it on font, that's just the standard white. If we go back in and we change that to primary, then obviously that is the primary colour, which is the blue. The uh, ascent is the yellow colour. And then finally, the warm is the red colour. So that's quite nice and you can change the, the colouring of, of different um, fields that you've got in, whether that's numbers or text. So that's one of the features recently. And as you'll also notice, there's more options on these. So you've got this idea now of a time to live. So that's been a, a kind of thing in networking for quite a while. So how long something lives before it's kind of discarded. And now you can do that in this. So if you don't receive some data for a while, um, currently set for five seconds here, it'll actually display something else. It'll display zero or null. I can't actually demo that to you because I'm not able to start and stop the data. But if if there is a value that, that's there and then isn't and you, you want that to be hidden, you can click this on and you can adjust that so that that data disappears after a period of time. You've also got this sampling data field. So this has been introduced and that's to try and sort of smooth the data out. So if you get a period of time where you're either getting a lot or a little, you can take samples over a period of time and then smooth that. So say something's bouncing around all over the place and you don't want to see that movement, you up that sample time and then take that over a longer period to give you more smoothness to the gauge. So you can see that working quite well over here on the knots. It's not um, jumping around all of it, it's just gently moving between 6.5 and 6.7. There's been some work done to the wind gauge. So on the wind gauge, you've now got the option to show next waypoint. So that's really good. So when you start putting waypoints in and your um, autopilot or your plotter is following a track, you can get this to show next waypoint. And again, you've got the same options as you had on the other one. So you've got the sample timer and you've got an option here again to start getting rid of data if, if you um, don't receive any updates. The other things are the same here. We've got the wind um, apparent and true uh, and the wind speed. And obviously this is bringing in the data now for the next waypoint. Head over to this second page that I've created. Again, um, I'm using the color option on this time panel. Um, but what you can now do is you can alter the format. So we know that if mainly in the UK, we like to see day, day, month, month, year, year. I think that's pretty much a standard. But in other countries, they tend to flip that round and you can sometimes have month, month, day, day, and then year, year. Or you might want to see the time first. So you can just go into this field and you can literally just change this round to however you want. It's coming up with some options there because that's what I've had a bit of a play with. But let's just say, for example, I wanted to see hours and minutes first and then the, the date after it, I'll just delete that. I'll hit save. I'll change the colour at the same time. Let's put it back to font. Then it just changes that date around and displays it in the, the way that you want to see it. 
Obviously the data in here is old, so it's actually from 2014. So the date isn't right, but that would then display the current date and time depending on what you've set the path to. So that's normally picked up for from the GPS information. Um, and obviously you've got all the default uh, sources, so you can, you can tell it to pick a particular source. And one of the other updates that they've put in is about priorities. So if you see multiple sources of the same data within this field, what you would need to do is you would need to head over to Signal K, set some priorities as to which one you want that default source to be, and then you can come back here and now display that data correctly. I've had a problem with that in the past where I had multiple times coming in from different GPS sources and I used to have to select that. I then did a video on priorities and made it so that it would work and pick the priorities for me. So. As I say, you would need to set that up in Signal K, and then once it's set up in Signal K, um, KIP from version 2 will then display that data correctly. In version 2.4, they've also added an option for gesture control because this is obviously starting to be used on tablets and touch devices. So you can, um, they've got some options now for gesture control, and one of those is if you double click, it goes straight to night mode. So that works really quite nicely. Again, double click straight back out double click back in. So I like that. And you can also swipe left and right from the main layout area on the page as shown here. So if we head back to some of the earlier changes that were released in version two, and I head over to settings, one of the things that they've changed now is that the KIP client authenticates with Signal K. So previously you used to get the token. Now what they're doing is they're actually authenticating with the server and that's given them some different options in terms of storage. You can store the config on the Signal K server, but you can also store it locally. And what that means is if you want to copy this setup to multiple different tablets or PCs, you literally just log in, type your username and it will pull the config. So no more do you have to try and copy paste configs from one option to the other, you can just log straight in with that authentication and you can get access to that saved config. If you want a different config, then you have options here to store the config locally, or you simply log in with a different user account. So say for example, for me, I view some of the data on my phone, and this kind of layout that I've got here isn't really suitable for a smaller screen. It tries to obviously squish it all down and it's not really readable, so I tend to, to use my phone with numeric tabs um, and boxes, and then I can read it a bit easier. So in order to do that, what you can do is you can go into the settings and create a dedicated account in Signal K and then sign in with those credentials in KIP and all of the settings would just follow that account. That means you wouldn't need to copy and move anything around. As soon as you sign in, the configuration is there. You also have the option to move configurations around and that's all in the storage section. So you can go to remote storage, you could set it up on a device. For instance, I could take this, this one here, this main one that I've saved, and then I could say to it, well, actually, I'm on a different device now and I wanna use local storage, and I just hit copy there and um, save it locally to, to that device. And vice versa, if I've created one on local storage and I wanna push it back to Signal K, then obviously I have that option too, uh, and I can switch this around and, and overwrite the one that's stored within Signal K or I can, as I say, save them locally to the device. They've written a configuration management help up here, which goes through all the different options of, of how you store either locally or in remote storage, and some of the ideas behind why you would want to do that. So again, that, that's a really big change to the, the way that it works, um, and um, it's obviously added a lot more flexibility to it now. In terms of energy, they have now added kilowatt hours, so that's a new option for displaying data in kilowatt hours. And there's also a new race timer display that was introduced in version two. Also, there's now an automatic option where you can switch between night and day modes based on sun phases. So there's an add-on that you install to Signal K, which then sends that information across. And just by clicking this option, it will automatically switch to night mode and then back to day mode. So that's another good option there. There's also a feature to actually run KIP as an application, and I'll just show it on the Raspberry Pi here. But if you click on the three dots uh, and click install there, it'll actually remove some of the surrounding area that the normal web browser would use. That's a really useful option to have on a mobile device because obviously you don't want that real estate used. Here you can see it demoed on the Raspberry Pi, and again, it just removes the top bars, and I think it looks really quite nice. 
If you don't want to use that feature, you can obviously use the uninstall option, um, but that just shows you how it works on the Raspberry Pi. We'll switch over to the phone now and show you how it works on a phone. So on your phone, click the share option and then you need to click add to home screen. You can give this a name, it'll basically give you an app. Once you click on the app, it'll load Kip and it'll load Kip full screen without the bars top and bottom. So as you can see here, you can do the, the change between the night and day mode. And if I open both applications, you can see the difference in how much space you actually gain by using this option. So I hope that's a useful quick tour of what has changed in Kip. Obviously, there's a lot of development going on at the moment, so there's probably going to be even more things really shortly, which is which is really nice to see. It's good to see development of this platform because it really is very useful. I use it a lot myself, um, and I do like the new features. I particularly like the new wind gauge, how that's been simplified. It, it's really quite clean looking now and nice. So there'll be some more videos coming soon on um, the Raspberry Pi 5, and we hope to see you on the next one.